Hello. Mitosis and meiosis. If you went to high school in the United States, then you probably learned about mitosis and meiosis. I know I did. And I really haven't thought about it since <laughs> until I started taking this genetics class. And now I think I want to think about it as meiosis than mitosis because it might make a little bit more sense to me. Here's why. So mitosis is cell division of your non-gamete your, um, any cell that's not a sperm or an egg divides by mitosis. And mitosis would be a cell dividing so much cell division. These are going to be any number of cells. They can differentiate into all sorts of stuff. And then eventually with enough cell division, it starts to be what we think of as the organism. In this case, a human. This human also has gametes. That's sperm and egg. A female, from the moment she's born, has all the eggs she's ever going to have. So, um, I'll just show you that um, by saying that as an adult, there, oh, that line is really wacky. This little organism is either going to have an egg. sperm if it is biologically male and it'll have an egg if it's biologically female so um, this is how I learned I mean a very shorthand version of how I learned mitosis and then meiosis and this doesn't really paint the picture for me of what's going on which is why I want to start with meiosis instead. So we have these sperm and these eggs and they're meeting to allow, <laughs> to allow mitosis to happen. So how does that happen? Well, in humans, we've got, let's say we got two adult organisms here. This one can be female. This one can be male, which means this female has this egg, this male has this sperm, and they decide to reproduce sexually. So the egg and the sperm meet, which leads to fertilization. Which leads to cell division. So here we had meiosis got us to here. And mitosis got us to here. Just draw a little circle so that makes more sense. So that's how I'm going to talk about it today, and if that made no sense to you, I completely understand. As always, I'm not a science teacher, I'm not a scientist, I'm just a science student. I just love this stuff. So let's start thinking about meiosis, shall we? Let's. So, there 
are a few phases that your cell goes through and it's usually drawn as like a circle. So we'll start here with this little circle and first little stage of the cell cycle is called G1. And G1 stands for growth. And G1 you have haploid chromosomes. And haploid means uh, like normally you would see a chromosome look like this, that's diploid, because die, there's two. Haploid is just one of them. And I've heard it explained that you can think of haploid as half. They start with the same, the same letter. So in this phase, this is growth. Next, you have S phase. And in S phase, your DNA replicates. So go from haploid to diploid and you're going to end up with double the amount of chromosomes that you started with. Now the concept of a chromosome is really complicated to me. Like, this is a chromosome and so is this. But, uh, oh, it's one chromosome. But if these two were separated, they would be two chromosomes. And it really depends on the number of centromeres you have. Centromere is this like little dot right here where they connect. So when they're in S phase, your chromosomes aren't neatly wound up like this. They're all really like spaghetti-y and soupy, just like in there. Just in your nucleus, like not organized. Then we go into G2 phase where you prepare to divide. last little step here is M phase. And this is where meiosis occurs or mitosis. So this cycle keeps going around and around as, um, as cell division is needed. But if cell division isn't needed, you can jump off the cycle and go to G0. And this little off-ramp helps prevent cancer because uh, an unchecked, unchecked cell division is cancer, basically. So uh, let's go to meiosis. So meiosis has two phases. Let's start with, let's pick a different color, shall we? Meiosis one. one is called reductional division. It divides vanilla and its chromosomes. Mitosis 2, which we'll do next, is equational. Equational division. <laughs> it separates the cystic chromatids and it's similar to mitosis. So in meiosis, the goal is to go from having cells with 46 chromosomes if you're a human, down to cells with 23 chromosomes, and those are called gametes. The reason you want to go to 23 is because these guys are going to pair up, and if you had 46, then you'd have a, uh, a cell with way too many chromosomes, and humans are only supposed to have 46. So we want to make humans. we got to get our gametes down to 23 chromosomes. And this is how we're going to do it. So first, with the reductional division, we have prophase 1. And 
in Pearl Phase 1, you have a nucleus full of this stuff. During Pearl Phase, that's when the um, chromosomes coil up into what we recognize as this stuff. So, um, we're gonna get little mitotic spindles forming. And this is going to coil around your histones. And then we'll go into prometaphase, which I'm, my teacher hasn't really spent that much time on, so I'll just show you a little bit. I'll, I'll do it slanty so that you know that you may not have to learn this. In prometaphase, the microtubules, so these mitotic spindles are, um, are made up of microtubules. They attach to the kinetochore, and the kinetochore is like so the kind of chromosomes. These microtubules and these spindles are kind of attached to the kinetochore like that. So th this, uh, I should draw it in green so it's a little clearer. This is probably going to end up being brown. <laughs> so anyway, these have wound up into these neat little coiled looking like X's, but really they're just like, like that, okay? So, the uh, microtubules attach to the kinetochore and prometaphase. In metaphase, so these guys are getting in line with their sister chromatids. So, a little bit of definition. You maybe don't need this. Maybe you remember all of this, but these two guys here are called sister chromatids. These are going to be two chromosomes. So, sister chromatids. Chromosome, chromosome. So, four sister chromatids, like right here. Alright, let's jump into um, Metaphase one before I get completely confusing. Metaphase uno. Okay. Metaphase one. In metaphase one, there are 20, in a human, there's 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. If you were asked this on a test, it is lame. So important that you think about when they're saying pairs. Because if they're saying 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes, what they're really saying is there are 46 chromosomes there. And that's what we're talking about here. 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. I'm going to draw one red and one green, and I'll show you why. Because they are so close that their little ends just like overlapping. They have little overlapping feet. They are held together so tightly. So this is a pair of homologous chromosomes. There are 23. In metaphase, meta, think of meta like middle. In metaphase, all your homologous chromosome pairs line up in the center of the cell. And overlap. And they're not, I mean, I shouldn't draw them all to look like that because, I mean, maybe you also have like some different guys over here. And maybe they arrange, like, switch around like that, which is cool. So, 
The way that they get lined up in the center is because this microtubule of the microtonic spindle moves them there. So, um, it would be like... So this is like a zoom out of that. Um, let's say this is a mitotic spindle. The nuclear envelope is like a like dissolved kind of. It's just like just don't look at this one anymore. <laughs> <laughs> just pretend like this is a cell. And we're a polearm. We got a little mitotic spindle over here. We got our microtubules attached to the kinetic loops. So then we go into anaphase one. And this is an important step because at the conclusion of anaphase one, segregation is going to be complete. And segregation is how we get such variety in our, in our um, species. It's how I don't look like my brother or my sister. It's how we're all just unique and we're all passing on different genes. So in anaphase one, this spindle is going to pull these apart. But you see these little overlappy spots? They're gonna switch genes. Like, uh, I don't know. I was gonna try and think of an analogy, but um, maybe I'll just draw it and it'll make sense to you because you're very, very smart. So we've got our cell. Let's do our mitotic spindle. Let's just do four little guys. If I had been a good planner, I would have, let me see, I would have started here with the right amount. How many do I have here? One, two, three, four, five. You know what? I am being a good planner. I'll just throw another one in. This is where the planning has to happen. So. They're going to pull these apart. This one's going to get... This guy's going to get pulled this way. But, oh my gosh, watch what's going to happen. It is going to take with it the little overlapping nubbins from the green guy. And the green guy is going to get pulled this way. And it's going to take with it these little nubbins from that one. And that's, you know, once these divide, they're going to be different cells with different recombinations from its parents that we saw on the page before. So this one's going to be the same if I'm looking at this correctly. Little green. And this one's going to be, it's going to get those little wheatsies. This one's also red. So remember, in um, if this was in the human body, there would be 23 of these pairs of homologous chromosomes, meaning there'd be 23 here and 23 here. And soon you're going to see the consequences of that. Did the red and green, so now I have the purple and oranges. So purple. With little orange guys. And orange. With little purple guys. And this one was gonna be orange. Purple guys and oh, purple with little orange guys. I can see how a person could be watching me do this and then I make a mistake and totally don't notice and the person is like at home like, what are you doing? Oh my gosh, you made a mistake. Anyway, um, whatever, we're 
you're just trying to learn, it's fine. You can, <laughs> I'm sure that if I make a mistake, you are smart enough to figure it out and ignore it. So anaphase is when this happens and that is when segregation is complete. Then we go into telophase. Phase one, guess what? The nuclear envelopes coming back. And this cell is gonna divide. The mitotic spindle goes away. And um, I'll just I'll close these nuclear envelopes so that you get it a little clearer. But uh, the cell is divided. This one's gonna have this chromosome. This chromosome, this chromosome. These guys have these little feetsies. And this one's got this chromosome, this chromosome, this chromosome with these little feet. And then this one's got. purple with orange. Okay, so we have done meiosis one. Now we're ready for interkinesis. Interkinesis <laughs> is kind of where we go back to soup. And we don't always go to interkinesis, but sometimes we do. Let's see. We need a new page. Now we have two cells that just went through. Um, let's do this dark blue for meiosis too. <laughs> Ganji spell. Let's try and make that mess. Meiosis two. Electric boogaloo. Okay, we went through interkinesis where we went back to soup. And then we are going to do something somewhat similar to what we just did, except we are getting down to 23 chromosomes instead of 46. Okay, prophase 2. Prophase two, we went from the soup to more tightly coiled chromosomes. We still have the nuclear envelope, these kinetochores, I'm sorry, not kinetochores, uh, mitotic spindles are starting to form. Remember, I'm just drawing five, but you would have, uh, you would show 23 if this were like a, a human. Uh, but now, remember at the end of Taylor phase, we had two cells. Oops, five. Why do I want to draw four? One, two, three, four, five. And uh, eventually, you know what? No spoilers. I'll just save that for then. So, um, this top one is going to correspond with this top one will correspond with this right one. So this has red, red, red with green feet. You know what? I should look up very briefly what these little feet are called because I know they're called something.
Ms. Mata? So had more of an orange guy with purple feet and a little purple guy with orange feet. And um, I realized that I drew this like opposite, but just imagine that they're like swimming around in there and flipping and twisting and um, it, um, the little turning of those helps with the randomization because we don't really know which side things are going to wind up on. And that is just, you know, the beauty of it all. So this one has orange again and purple. We have a whole bunch of green. Green, green, green. Just swimming, swimming, swimming. Here. So that's Pearl Meta Phase 2. These two cells are these two cells. They just separate. And you'll remember in Pearl Meta Phase, I'm sorry, this is Pearl Phase 2. In Pearl Meta Phase 2, the microtubules are attaching to these kinetochores. Kinetochores being the very center. Boop. Boop, 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 boop. And uh, the nuclear envelope is going away, and we're going to metaphase two. Okay. Metaphase two, this is where we're breaking down to haploid. So, uh, here's a phrase I didn't use before. But this is true then as it is now. This is the metaphase plate. It's the center of the uh, cell where these chromosomes are going to line up because the mitotic spindle is going to pull them there. So this mitotic spindle attached to the centromere of the chromosomes. Five. And these uh, go all the way to the poles, so I should have drawn that a little bit bigger. Two, three, four. Uh oh. <laughs> Five. And I'll draw it down here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And let's draw it, shall we? They're gonna um, just line up however they line up. So let's say that the purple one gets grabbed by the top guy and it's gonna go all the way up here. And let's say his little orange nubbins lined up on this side. Gotta make that mitotic spindle get all the way to it so the microtubules can attach the kinetochore. Then Next, let's do the orange one, and its purple guys wind up on this side. Then, we're all red and green for the rest of them. Spindle attaches. Green guy 
guys on this side, green guys also on this side. Let's, for fun, we'll put the green guys on this side and this one. Now we gotta do the same down here. Let's do a green guy up here. Let's do a green guy in the middle. Green guy at the end. This is just random, it's grabbing, it's the beauty of life. <laughs> so, yeah, attaching, attaching, attaching. They are already attached, excuse me, and they're pushing them to these places. So, red on this side. Let's just do it so that they all are on the same in this one. It'll be interesting. Boop. Purple. Purple. A lot of drawing, huh? Okay. So then we come to anaphase. This is where our 23 diploid chromosomes in each cell break into 23 pairs of haploid chromosomes. And what did I say about the word pairs? It is a trick. There are 46 chromosomes in anaphase. Uh, total. <laughs> in each cell, we're going from, oh my gosh, this is so confusing. No, no, I'm right. So there are 23, okay, 23 of these guys. This is one, this is two. One, one, two. Oh gosh, I hope that made some sense. We're going to anaphase two, where things get pulled apart. same size, but this is the artist rendering. No judgment. One, two, three, four, a five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So, Maybe, uh, let's just say, this is haploid. I mean, it's haploid, but they're paired, and now we're breaking up the pairs. So let's just break up the pairs, and hopefully it will make sense soon. Now, remember what these are called? This one and this one are sister chromatids. Separate them. They're both chromosomes going from one chromosome to two chromosomes. This one is this little purple guy with the orange ends. This one is that orange one with the purple ends. This one is that plain old purple guy. And this one, oh shoot, I drew it backwards, didn't I? Forget it. This one doesn't have purple ends. This one's just plain orange. This one <laughs> is orange with purple ends. Uh, let's, you know what? I don't feel like putting this down. Let's go down here. And uh, it doesn't really matter that I'm drawing them curvy one way or the other because think of them like going like. <laughs> can go bend, bend back and forth. And then I have the purple one with the orange dots down here. And then green and red. Bye bye.
<laughs> I am out of control. It should be red. Gray ends. Red. With green ends. Red. With green ends. Red. 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 Green. Green, 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 green with red ends. Okay. Drawing is almost over for this part. We are going to teal a phase. Phase is when our cells split up the rest of the gunk inside the cell. So we've divided the chromosomes and now we're dividing the rest of the cellular material. Now this one is going to get a purple one with orange ends. An orange one with purple ends. A... Oh crap, I did it again. This is just plain orange. green ends. And then one of these guys has green ends. And then two just regular red ends. Red, red. Now down here we have green, green, green. And this one is green, green, green. All of them have red ends. And these are going to split up sperm and this was an egg, they could meet up and fertilize. I mean, there's a lot more to it than that. <laughs> there's like a lot more to, uh, like, there's like polar bodies involved, but we're just skipping right ahead to these have been made when you're a, a wee one and then you grow up you become a mature adult who can consent and uh, you agree with someone else that you want to reproduce and uh, you undergo sexual reproduction and a, an egg is fertilized by a sperm. Uh, no judgment, whatever. You, I don't care how you did it. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> anyway, so you decide that having a fertilized egg is a very good thing and that you uh, want to create a human and so this fertilization happens and then the fertilized egg oops I used this one already it undergoes mitosis oh my friends oh my friends mitosis time let's talk so I already took you through 
the uh, cell cycle that looked like. Oops, sorry, that was loud. That looked like this. And we had G1, S, G2, M. Uh, and you can also jump off and go to G0, which is when the cell escapes the cell cycle. It can stay there uh, temporarily or indefinitely. So um, at all these little arrow spots are checkpoints where the cell is like, they're like point of no returns. So after the G1 slash S checkpoint, the cell is for sure gonna divide. After this G2 slash M checkpoint, the cell is going, it is like, this is when division is gonna happen. So this is like, Okay, I'm into dividing. This is like, it's gonna happen. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. All this business is called interphase, and this section here is called mitosis. So this is going to be a child's play compared to what we just went through with meiosis because mitosis is just like a cell dividing, not like a cell dividing into four parts and going through two phases. So, uh, all right, let's do this. Prophase. So, in prophase, these soupy chromosomes that I've been talking about for a million years condense. They coil around those little histones and they become uh, what we think of as chromosomes. In this case, let's go brown. Why not? Uh, we got sister chromatin. Just like swimming around in here. So instead of having like one and two and they overlap like in their little chiasmata, I think is the word, uh, we just have sister chromatids paired up. This is a chromosome, this is a chromosome, this is a chromosome. We have little chromosomes. And we have our mitotic spindle starting to form. Uh, yeah, I'll draw a fourth one. In prometaphase, as you know, might not be on your test, but these mitotic spindles grab on to all these little guys. So let me just they're gonna grab them. And then they're going to wrangle them into metaphase. Huh, we're in brown. Mm, whatever. So in metaphase, as you know, there's the metaphase plate right at the center. These little chromosomes are going to line up there because that's where these spindle fibers are going to put them. Our nuclear envelope is no longer there. I wonder if you can see this. Yeah, you can see it. So each kinetochore So uh, they're attaching to the kinetochore, at least centrosome, and then we're going to everybody's favorite anaphase. In anaphase, we are going. 
going to constrict our spindle fibers and we'll pull these sister chromatids apart. So, um, if you remember in S, S phase, this is where the DNA replicated. So, uh, we got like a whole bunch of DNA going on in here. We're going from, okay, if these are each chromosome and they're uh, paired, we're going to just split them apart. And then we're going to go back into this cell cycle again. So, anaphase splits them apart. We've got right now double the amount of chromosomes in there and then we're going to split our cell in telophase telophase and cytokinesis cytokinesis is what i've been calling uh splitting up the rest of the junk in the cell so boop boop nuclear envelope Welcome back. And cytokinesis is when like all the rest of this stuff splits up. And guess what? So I know it looks like there's less here, but there's really the same amount that there was way up here in G1, because this is just this M cycle. So really we're going from here, we're jumping right back into G1, where they're going to in S phase, double up the chromosomes again because of DNA replication. And we're going to do this until we are to the size we want it to be. Hello. And when we're done with that, we're going to jump off this into phase G0, G0, and uh, we'll either stay there forever or we'll stay there until we're ready to divide again. But this guy is this guy. <laughs> he or she will have their own gametes, sperm and egg, and if they decide to reproduce sexually, they could have fertilization, mitosis, and create another organism. Oh my goodness, you guys, thank you so much for letting me go through all of this with you. They say the best way to learn, I don't know who they is, but uh, the best way to learn is to teach it to somebody else. It's kind of like the ring. So uh, thank you. You're saving my life.